Hey everybody, this is Gary of the OK Modeler channel and welcome to episode one of the Rebel London bus build here. Um, I'm not sure why I got this, but I'm kind of excited about doing this project here. Um, typically, I don't do cars or buses, at, but this I thought would be a great project to do. Um, I got this kit in Canada for a hundred Canadian dollars. So I got a good deal on this one. I, my understanding is I believe that Revel is reissuing this particular model in sometime this summer of 2022. So that's a, that's a cool thing to have right here. Um, anyways, um, there's a lot of parts here. I'm not doing a kit review. That's just something I don't do. I'm not even sure what to say about it. But um, there are a lot of parts and there's some photo etch pieces, but I'll go ahead and let's get started on the engine here. All right, before I start on building the engine here, it's kind of surprising to know that there are photo etch parts for this model kit here, and here they are. I picked up these uh, kits over at a website called spotmodel.com. I believe they're based in Spain. So all this cost me roughly 100, 140 bucks plus shipping, but it does come with photo etch parts, no resin parts. Um, right here, there's some for the engine. There's some parts here for the steps as well as some of the chrome pieces that go, I believe on the hood or the engine. And then there is a floor plate on this one. So, Depending on the level of detail you want to do, you don't have to get the photo etch as I've said in the past, but you know, whatever it is to kind of enhance the model, you got to just do what you want to do. Just make sure you have fun with your build here. All right. I haven't done a rebel model in a long, long time, but that's okay. All models are the same. It's just different instructions, except I don't think I've ever done a Revel model that is from Revel Germany. Hold on, I'm saying the name right. All right, so I guess the first decision I have to make is what engine I want to pick. I have the Leland engine here, or you can get this other engine here, the Scania. Gosh, I, I'm sure I butchered that name, but this engine looks like it's from after 1996. And I'm probably gonna be leaning more towards doing the Leland, the Leland engine right here. You know, it's an old school bus. Let's try to keep it with an old school engine here, all right? All right, I got most of the pieces for step one here. Didn't get the fan blade out yet. I'll get that another time. But just like any other model piece, or model set that you work on, you're going to have seam lines running right in the middle of your engine here. So that shouldn't be a big issue. It just takes a little time to kind of get rid of them all. But uh, hopefully you get this won't take too long to get rid of. Just a little patience as well as needed. But uh, once I get that taken care of, I'll get all the other pieces attached to the engine. All right, folks, I got my engine pieces split into two piles. I got the aluminum side and I got the steel colored ones here. All right, for the aluminum side, I'm gonna airbrush the XF-16, the flat aluminum. And then on this side, I will be hand brushing this one using the Testor flat steel right here. This is an old bottle as you can tell. This probably has ingredients in here that they don't put in the current bottles right now. So it's probably toxic. Most likely it is. Which is good because it smells good. All right if you don't have this one here you can always opt to use the Tamiya flat the metallic gray one they have here the XF56 here. It's the, their steel color right there, but 
that's another option you can use. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get all this painted and I'll be right back. All right, I got the uh, photo etch part for the fuel lines in here and the first half went well, but then the second half, not so well. I mean, if you could take a look here, you see all the super glue that I put on here. I wasn't able to remove it and it just glopped up and it wasn't cooperating with me. So I just ended up forcing it in there. Um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Maybe in hindsight, I should have just cut some of these off and drilled it in there or drilled some holes and maybe that would have been a better idea. But yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and move on. We'll just kind of ignore that that part right here. We'll just say it's a broken fuel line or something. At least it's not a real engine, but all right. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get all the parts uh, put on to this engine here and this should conclude this first episode of this build. Here is the completed engine. It looks pretty good. Um, the red adds a little nice little touch there too. Um, I still gotta put the decal that goes right here. I'll put that on later. Um, you know, this was pretty easy to put together. Everything fit pretty well. Not bad at all. So got a long ways to go. This first step of the uh, many, many steps to go for this build here. Not as many as the battleship ones, but you know, it's always fun to do something different, I, I have to say. Well, anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and conclude this episode here. And it doesn't look too bad. I'll try to put a picture of this uh, engine on the video here. In the meantime, for the next episode, I'm gonna be working on steps 10 and 11 right here. This is the undercarriage of the bus. We got our drive shafts, um, suspension parts. I guess there you have an option where um, the front wheels turn, I think. So that'll be interesting to see how that works as well. And then we got more of the suspension parts. So anyways, um, hope you like this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. Uh, if you have any feedbacks, uh, put those down on the comments section. If you haven't, please subscribe to this channel. That would be greatly appreciated. Until then, thanks for watching, and I will see you all on the next episode.